capstone is a culminating experience for a learner. I love how there's games and athletics. There's performances in the performing arts. There's a big exhibition. So imagine the school as a series of practices. Capstone is that game. It's that in-game experience of getting, as a learner, your ideas iteratively out into the world to work on a project that you're not just passionate about, but that impacts yourself, your community, and those around you. Practically, capstones are great at the end point or culmination of um, lower school, middle school, or upper school. They're great in fifth grade, eighth grade, senior year. But I've seen capstones work junior year. I've seen it work with seventh graders. I've seen it work with fourth graders. I had this dream job where I was the K-12 capstone coordinator, managing capstones in fifth, eighth, and 12th grade. Why it was such a dream job was because I was working with learners on what they cared about, what was relevant to them and giving them a new set of skills around project management, around iteration, around collaboration and communication. And so Capstones became a space where we got to learn for the sake of learning, where research became rooted in what we were actually interested in, and where all of these really foundational skills that happened K-4 to the fifth grade capstone, 6-7 to the eighth grade capstone, 9-10-11 to the 12th, now had meaning. They now had relevancy. Like why you were learning to communicate and write was now deeply relevant. The why capstone is that learners actually get to have evidence of who they are and what they're working on and their skills. And I've seen it time and time again in the college application process. Regardless of GPA or SAT score, when a college can see who a learner is, what they're capable of, what they care about, that is so much more valuable than a narrative essay or just a narrative essay. I've seen capstones and the work that's come out of them be used for jobs and internships. Again, a learner is showcasing what they're working on, how they worked on it, and the iterations of it. And that is catnip for an early employer. So much more meaningful if it's documented than an empty resume that looks like everyone else's. So I think that for a learner on the personal side, a capstone can create belonging and confidence. It can allow them to test out ideas in a safer space in school, build a business, create a venture, a campaign, a social justice initiative, and then they can carry that forward. It just creates meaning in a learner's life that can be transformational. And my philosophy, I think our philosophy at Unruler is when learners see the relevancy of learning a technical skill, when that's documented, when that's shared, when that's celebrated, they're going to learn it at a much faster rate than had they not seen the relevancy. When it's just an assignment and they don't understand how it's going to fit into their toolkit for when they want to create on their own terms. Here are some of my top tips on a macro and micro side to run an effective capstone program. If you have a capstone that starts in 12th grade, really have it start in ninth. Have the skill building, have kind of smaller projects that lead to that big one senior year embedded throughout so that by the time they get to their capstone experience, it isn't foreign. The skills are built, the capacities are there, the confidence and sense of belonging that is required for a great capstone have kind of been built into the pedagogy and scaffolding getting up to that grade. A micro piece of advice is to have some form of a weekly or class check-in. Have some kind of micro check-in where you know what's happening or what's not happening with a learner. So many learners are experiencing a long-term project really for the first time. Or they're being told, all right, go take your ideas and turn them into something that's a reality. That can be jarring, especially if you're a school that hasn't done that in all of their kind of educational experiences. So give them scaffolding, help them understand project management and understand what your learners are doing, at least on a weekly basis. It's vital that capstones tap into the identities, backgrounds, kind of peaks and valleys, ups and downs in your learners' lives. The more ideation, the more research, the more you like really focus in on creating a culture of vulnerability and trust, the more you give time for learners to test out what they're interested in, what skills and capacities, what problems they want to solve in the world, the more fruitful that overall experience is going to be. So if you're embarking on a semester-long capstone grade, a year-long capstone grade, but man, if you're able to start early 
if it's a multi-year experience and they get time to iterate on their passions and their skills, that's really the gold of this capstone experience. One of my biggest learning lessons from being a capstone coordinator across K-12 is to involve key stakeholders of the school. When you're building your program, when you're thinking about deliverables and milestone dates, and when you're iterating your program. So for me, involving college counseling, admissions, the advancement office to make sure that there's mentors, and most importantly, having department heads, English, social studies, kind of co-create or work with you on your rubrics, on your key deliverables, and weave that into the language of their courses so that they're enmeshed within the school from 9th to 12th or K to 12. Big exhibition days, not just at the end of the experience, but throughout are huge. Having key stakeholders in a learner's life be a part of the capstone and understand what's happening is so vital. And capstones have the ability to make learning truly kind of community driven. I'm an educator that used Unruler. I was a K-12 capstone coordinator and I found out about Unruler and I was so overjoyed because it solved this huge problem, which was how do I have visibility into my learner's process and what they're working on? How is there a culture of check-ins and reflections so that I know what's happening and so that I don't have to create too many assignments or milestones in a capstone experience? It's important to have structure, but if you have too much structure, there's no time for actual work. Unruler is the ultimate capstone tool because it not only helps to capture the progress of a product, service a student is working on, but it captures the reflections and process. And that can be just between teacher and student, or that can be with an entire cohort where other learners are jumping into other learners' check-in posts or reflections and adding nuance, comments, asking each other questions. For me, Unruler aided making this capstone process a very active versus passive experience. Learners had greater agency over the story they were telling of their capstone, but also the progress that they were sharing out. One of the coolest aspects of my job is that I get to work with a total myriad of capstone schools, public, private, and charter, all embarking on capstones in different ways. Some start capstones in ninth grade. It's like the coolest idea for me in the world. Others just have it be a semester. Some have it as an entire class. Others have it during advisory. There isn't one way to do capstones in your school. If you're interested, we'd love to connect you to some of these amazing school leaders, boots on the ground teachers and learners that are embarking on bringing capstones to their school and more schools too. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, share it out with your learning community. We want capstones to grow and spread across education.